Welcome to Monterey County Pops Pros Teach. I'm Carl Christensen, the music director and conductor of Monterey County Pops. Our orchestra of fully professional musicians presents free concerts of pops and patriotic music throughout Monterey County. During the school year, we visit local schools and conduct clinics and workshops for student musicians in the afternoon. And in the evening, we perform together in a free concert for their community. We are committed to mentoring young musicians, and since we have not been able to visit schools since March, we have created this series of instrumental clinics. They will be broadcast once a week on Comcast Channel 24, and they will also be posted on our website, montereycountypops.org, along with downloadable exercises, tips, and other print material. Bienvenido a Monterey County Pops Pros Teach. Soy Carl Christensen, director musical de Monterey County Pops. Nuestra orquesta de músicos totalmente profesionales presenta conciertos gratuitos de música ligera y patriótica en todo el condado de Monterrey. Durante el año escolar visitamos escuelas y realizamos clínicas y talleres para estudiantes músicos por la tarde y por la noche presentamos un concierto conjunto para su comunidad. Para nosotros, la educación musical de jóvenes músicos es muy importante y como no hemos podido visitar escuelas desde marzo, hemos creado esta serie de clínicas instrumentales. Se transmitirán una vez a la semana en el canal 24 de Comcast y también se publicarán en nuestro sitio web montereycontipops.org junto con ejercicios consejos y otro material impreso descargable. And now please enjoy our guitar episode presented by guitarist Terence Farrell. Ahora disfruten de nuestro episodio de la guitarra presentado por Terence Farrell. Hi, I'm Terence Farrell. I'm a classical guitarist, and I've had the great fortune of playing all over the world. I've played on every continent except one, and I've played in every state except two. And I've done it on a nylon strung acoustic guitar. There are two major types of acoustic guitars. One is with nylon strings and the other is with steel strings. But it doesn't really matter which kind of guitar you play, you're going to want to be able to finger pick the guitar and that's what we're going to concentrate on today. So first of all, let's go over a little bit about how we should hold the guitar so we don't have problems later on. We can really advance and, and not have a back problem, for example. So a couch and a bed are really not good to sit on because they're too soft and it doesn't give your back any support. It's better to sit in a, um, a straight back chair without arms because you want total movement and you don't want to bang your guitar up either. So it, no arms, no real soft, although you can have a pad on, your, on the seat of a straight back chair. Now if we look at slide one, we'll see the different positions that you can hold the guitar. They all have a few things in common. This lower, what's called the waist on the guitar, is going to be on the left leg or the right leg, or we're holding it between our legs for the classical guitar. We have our leg raised for the classical guitar, but wherever we are, it's going to be resting on the waist on one of your legs. And they all have in common is that it's going to lean into your body, and instead of the legs, I'm using a strap, so the strap is, is in lieu of having, uh, using a leg. Now the important thing is with your right arm, you want the right arm dead weight just resting on top of the guitar. It's holding the guitar steady but just by its weight. So you don't want to be crimping your shoulder and, and doing anything of that sort. And it's crossing right around this thing called the bridge. So whatever it is, is your forearm is going to be back here. We're going to cross the strings so that our natural position is going to be uh, over the back end of the sound hole and we're going to strum across it in a perpendicular fashion. Now this is called our regular sound and now if I go over the 
over the fretboard, I get a softer sound. We call that dolce or sweet. And if we're back here, we get a brighter sound. So we have three sounds that we can play with, just with uh, being in this position. Now, uh, on this next one, on the slide two, we're going to start to look at uh, what we're going to do with the left hand. Now, this is very important. We don't want to hold it like a club. We don't want to hold it like a bat. There's nothing that touches the guitar except your fingertips and your thumb. And the thumb is a counterweight behind the neck where your fingers are going to play on the fingertips on the front of the guitar. So this is on slide three. You'll see the back of it. My thumb is fairly down. My thumb, now if I'm playing in first position, what does first position mean? That means my first finger is playing the first fret. This is the first fret, the one closest to the uh, head of your guitar. If I'm in that position, my thumb is going to be right behind the first fret because if we close our hand, the natural spot for it is between our first and second finger. If we're over here, no support for our hand. And if we're over here towards our pinky, then it's a little tight and it'll get uncomfortable fast. So that's what we want to do for our basic hand positions, okay? And that way, your, your elbow isn't out, it isn't in, everything is just sort of doing the Newton. And we we'll work on gravity, let everything just relax. Now one more thing before we go on, um, I, I know we've all learned how to tune the guitar by itself, but let's go over it one more time because I think we all now use either an app on our phone or we've got something up here that'll help us tune. Uh, what if the battery goes dead? What if you're out of cell phone range? How are you going to tune the guitar to itself so that you could go ahead and play? And well, let's look at uh, slide four here. And we have to pick a string and just say it's in tune. The best one to pick is the sixth string. Now here's another thing about the guitar. The sixth string is the string closest to your head. The first string is the string closest to the floor. Now we'll just assume this string is in tune. So if we put our finger on the fifth fret, you'll all have a dot at your fifth fret. You're raising the sound of that string so that we're going to be the same as the fifth string. So if it's off, That's the sound we want, so we tune up that way, and then, then the same on the fifth string, fifth fret will give us our fourth, fourth string, fifth fret will give us our third. Now the third is the only one different, we will go to the fourth fret, and that will give us our open second string, the B note, and then a back to the fifth fret for the second string to the first string. So just a little review there for that. Now, again, uh, what are we gonna call our hands? Our left hands, uh, on the next slide here on five, I think we're on five. On this one, uh, you can see what our two hands, anything that we read guitar music, zero through four is going to refer to our left hand. Zero means I don't put a finger on a string. One is your index finger, two is your second, three is your ring finger, four is your pinky. Now, it doesn't refer to fret. For example, I can have my finger here on the first fret, first, second string, but it's referring to my finger. I can also play that same note here on the third string, or I can play it up here on the fourth string, and I'm still using my first finger. So f numbers on your left hand. Right hand, we use the, uh, the words in uh, the alphabet, but it's the Spanish alphabet, and it's pulgar for your thumb. Indice for your index, medio for your middle, and anular for your ring. Now, some popular music, you'll see T for the thumb, R for your ring finger, and I and M, I think we can figure it out. So that's our basics on our hand positions. Now, what are we going to learn first? So first thing, let's, if we're in a band, we play a lead guitar, or we play a rhythm guitar. Lead guitar is playing melodies. It's playing one note at a time. From that, we're getting scales. We get our riffs. We're going to start with that and we'll go on to the, the other part a little bit later. My first experience with the guitar was playing a melody. I thought I was going to play it for show and tell. I got my first guitar lesson and I'm like eight or nine years old and found it was going to take me longer than a week to learn to play, but I eventually did. So let's wake up our hands a little bit for our finger picking. Uh, for right now, we'll just use index and middle on our right hand, okay? And with this, we have two different strokes we can use on the guitar with our fingers. One is called a rest stroke, which we will do for melodies. Now, a rest stroke is where I'm plucking a string. Now, I'm just 
have my finger on the top of the first string and I pluck and I rest it on my second string. That's called a rest stroke, okay? And we wanna do it with the middle finger and, and then do it on your own and do a nice relaxed thing, go back and forth between your index and your middle. And the reason we use two fingers is the same reason when we run we use two legs. If you hop on one, you're not gonna go very far very fast. So we do that. And what are we gonna do with our left hand? Okay, so we'll put our fingers very carefully behind a fret, and we wanna be right behind a fret. This is important. Now, we've all gotten buzzes out of our guitar. Sometimes the buzz is not because of pressing too lightly, but pressing in the wrong spot. I press here on the fret, I'm gonna get a lot of buzzes. If I press right behind the fret, nice clear sound, okay? So we'll start on the sixth string, which we can't rest stroke, but we can rest stroke the rest of the strings. And we're gonna play our first finger on the first fret, two on the second, three on the third, and fourth, and we're gonna go and do what's called a chromatic scale. We don't need to be reading music for this one, so, and you can pull it up anytime. A chromatic scale is the same as if we were on the piano and we played the white and black keys in a right, straight one after the other. And this is what we're gonna do on the guitar. Starting on the sixth string, I'll give us four for nothing, and then we'll start out. So, and don't forget your open string. One, two, three, four, and then we have open. And then we have the first fret, I'm going a little slower, sorry, second fret, third, and fourth. We don't do the fifth because if we did that, we'd be playing the same as the open fifth string A. So we play A next, open, and then the first fret, second fret, third fret, fourth string, and now to the fourth string, open, first fret, second, third, fourth, and I'm alternating with my left hand, and then we have open third, and now here we only go to the third fret, now the open second, one, two, three, four, now we're on the first string, open, one, two, three, four, now stop. Now, notice I'm having all, leaving all my fingers down. I'm working on getting my fingers stretched out, okay? Now, some of you, you won't be able to quite do that. So try to be careful with it. Now, when we get to the first string, make sure you leave your first finger down because now we're gonna slide it up to the fifth fret. This is called a guide finger. Very important in guitar music, if we can leave a finger down from where it was and just move it up or down a string. It doesn't have to find the string again, it's already on it. So we use a guide finger, we go up to the fifth fret, and the sixth, and the seventh, and the eighth, and we do that again. My first finger stays down, nine, 10, and we'll stop at 12. We're on the 12th fret, those are 12 half steps, that's what we get in an octave. So we have an open E, and on the 12th fret we have an open E. On a classical guitar, that's where the neck meets the body. On a steel strung instrument, you'll have two more frets before you get to the body of the guitar. You have two dots at your 12th fret. Now, we'll just stop there and go back down. And uh, when we get to nine, I'm gonna slide it all the way down to five. Put my other fingers back down and do the same thing. Now we're five, slide it back four, three, two, one. And when you go down, don't forget the open string. And then we're doing four, three, two on the second string and then open. Now on the third, remember only go to three, two, one, and then open. And now four, three, two, one, open. Fifth string, four, three, two, one, open. Sixth string, four, three, two, one, open. Now, if we look at the next slide on the first page, we see what all of that looks like in music. So those are the notes that we just played up to the first string and back down. And you'll see that some of the notes have a sharp in front of them. Those are what we call inharmonic tones and some don't. And you'll notice that at the very beginning, do you see that six with a circle on it? That doesn't, that's not a finger. We don't have six fingers. That's telling you a string. So if a circle is around a number, it tells you though that no, note is on what string, the sixth string, and the dots are telling you those other notes are on the sixth string. So that's what the circle around a number is, and you can see the I's and M's and the what fingering one, two, three, four. So that's a little bit for waking us up, our hands on our right hand for uh, playing a melody, playing lead guitar. And now let's go to 
uh, what we would do if we were playing. Uh, and we'll do a chord sheet now, that's the next page. And you'll see there are common chords, and you've already played in some of these keys, I know. Now again, if you don't get a clear sound out of a chord, try to figure out what's not clear. Is it because you're not behind the fret, so you're getting, getting a buzz? Is your finger blocking the next string? If we get this thumpy sound, that means my finger should be up on, more on its tip so it doesn't block the first string. So when you play a chord, play it one note at a time and really figure out what sound needs to be corrected or what string, finger, whatever needs to be corrected. Now if we look at the key of C, we'll see that infamous F, our bar chords. And I know some of us have a problem with that, so let's review how we play a bar chord. First of all, how are we going to do the bar? And we're going to start, first of all, by doing it on the fifth fret because our, it, the strings are softer there. Yeah, the first fret is really tough, so it's much softer at the fifth fret, so we'll try there. My first finger is going to go across all the strings. I'm going to raise the pitch of every string to the fifth fret notes. And how do I do that? My finger is not going to be right on the flat. It's sort of on the side of the finger and side towards your thumb. If you think of closing your hand like this, this is what we're going to have. And you want to make sure this is one where you can't grab like a bat. You need to press through with this joint. This joint needs to be flat and you need to be right up and snug against the fret all the way along. A lot of us, we're going to, if our elbow is out, we're going to be at the side and we won't get a clear sound out of the first string. But if I'm right next to the fret, we get a nice clean sound. You don't want to be too far over because it'll get into the pad of your hand. We want to make sure it's on your fingertips. You might want a little over the top, not a lot. That's going to be our classic spot for getting our bar. And the bar is the only one that does require strength. And there we have to have our first finger right behind the bar or you're going to have a lot of problems with it. Now this is a six string bar. And what does that mean is that, it, that we're barring off the sixth string. I'll explain it in a minute. First of all, make your E chord, but not with one, two, and three fingers. Make it with two, three, and four. So I'm making two, three, and four. Slide it up a fret. Now I'm barring all the way. Now E chord, our low note is E. Sixth string. If I go up one fret and bar, I'm on an F. So now I'm playing an F chord. And if I do that at the third fret, I will be a whole step up. So I'll be at a G and we can keep going up. A, B, and C. And the ones in between too, of course. Now you have to know this chord for playing classical rock and roll. Because the classic is the C chord, the F chord, and the G chord. Going back to the F chord and back to the C. So what I just told you, now you can play a thousand songs by changing the rhythm. So here's rhythm, one rhythm for it. Louie, Louie. So we got Louie, Louie, we've got got wild thing and we have La Bamba and 996 songs to go but we'll stop there. So now we've got our strumming down what are we going to do when we start finger picking? First thing is we separate the thumb we're going to play it separately from our fingers. Most finger picking the thumb is going to play the fourth fifth and sixth strings the D A and E strings and with our fingers to start off with let's just use them all together. We'll put them all together down on the strings. We put our first finger on the third string second finger on the second and our third finger on the first. It sort of lays in the hand kind of naturally and I'm right on the top. I don't dig down way deep because in this one we're going to do our next stroke. The first one we learned was a rest stroke. And this one is called a free stroke. And in this one, I just am going to close my fingers towards the palm of my hand and I'll get this sound. Doesn't need to be very loud. And then I play with my thumb if I play the sixth string. Now I just played an E minor chord with a, a finger picking pattern because we don't need our, these two fingers because I'm not playing those strings right now. And we played in common time four beats one, two, three, four. Okay, so you have a 
thumb and a chord, a thumb chord. Now if I'm playing a waltz, one thumb, two chords. Now I put that together with a key. If I'm in, let's say the D, we all know the key of D. So the fourth string is the most important note, it's the root. So we play the fourth string bass note and then strum, and then strum, then pluck our chord. It's one. Okay, so we have that would be a simple one. And if we play a G chord, the sixth string, our finger is on the G note on the third fret. So that's our root. So we play the sixth string for a G. And for our A7, A, A is our fifth string, so that's our root. So we play the fifth string. And the next thing we would do, naturally growing out of that, we'll, we'll do this in another lesson, but we would do alternating bass notes. And next thing we can do, bass runs. part is where we get into playing the notes individually that's called an arpeggio one of the most beautiful things you can do on the guitar is play an arpeggio so that's where we're going to concentrate on today there's all sorts of different arpeggios but what it essentially means is you're playing a chord but you're playing it one note at a time so now we're going to get to what we're really looking at today and we'll look at the next slide and we are, if I was on the internet and said, okay, I want to play House of the Rising Sun, I, I type in House of the Rising Sun and I press chords. I think we've all done this and you get a million and a half things that come up that will take us to the chords for House of the Rising Sun. Sometimes it'll have diagrams like this one does on our chords. Sometimes it'll even have a pattern that you can play and then it'll have the chord right above the part where you would be singing the lyrics. So we see that in this one, uh, we see these are all common chords. Oh, there's our F chord. We'll get to that in a minute. So what do we have to begin with? We're gonna arpeggiate on this one for just right now. Do the sixth string, play it, pluck it. Now pluck the third string, pluck the second string, second finger, pluck the first string with the ring, back to the middle, and then to the index. So we go index, middle, ring, middle, index with the sixth string. Now we're going to put that together with an A minor chord. So we have an A minor chord, we play the fifth string bass note. Now we play a C chord, stay on the fifth string because that's where the C note is. Open fourth string for the D. Now the F, if you have a hard time with that full F, we don't need a full F chord here. You can just lay your first finger across a couple of strings, play the fourth string, and then we go back to the fifth string for the A minor and C chord again, fifth string, and then E. And we play E again, and we go to A minor, C, D, A minor. Now down to E. Back to A minor, and you could do the next verse and go on from there. So if we go to the next slide, that's going to show you what we just did and how it looks in music. The top one are those are the notes we played. Underneath it's a tab. So it's showing you now in a tab, the numbers do not refer to the fingers on your left hand. They do refer to the fret. So if it says one, you're here. And if it says 12, you're up here. But these are all in first position, so it's all going to be between zero, meaning still open, and your first, second, or third fret. So that sort of takes us to where we've been on this. Now you wanna, might want to go to um, see a few more things that I have on the website at, at Monterey Pops, a, a list of what you should have in your, in your kit bag. Uh, the, all these examples that I'm showing you till the end, the, the first examples were all out of a book that I, it's a great book to have. It's called uh, School for Guitar, A Method for School for Guitar by Jerry Snyder. It's under 10 bucks. So it's something really good to have and um, you can see it on the website. Now one more thing. How does the guitar produce a sound? 
I used to tell people, well, you, you pluck a string, it vibrates, and the vibration goes down, around, rolls around, and comes out louder. But that's not the truth, and I was telling that for uh, uh, more years than I want to think. Now, this is how we used to tune. It's called a tuning fork. Now, if I make it vibrate, we've all done that with a piece of metal, you get to vibrate. It's making a sound. It's just too light for us to hear. And this is the concert pitch, it's A440, that means there's 440 cycles a second. It's still ringing. Now, the way we tune it, uh, do it on the guitar, now if I put it up here, uh, it doesn't make too much of a sound. And if I do it here, a little more sound. But if I do it here, this is the aha moment. Isn't that incredible? That bridge is getting the whole top to vibrate. That whole top vibrating is making the sun sound come out louder. And this has, has something to do with, okay, what kind of wood do you have in a guitar? A classical guitar, they don't make many, so you have to make sure that you, uh, the maker makes a really good guitar. So spruce is the, uh, spruce or cedar is what they use for the tops. The spruce comes from Europe, that's one continent. The backs and sides are from Indian rosewood, so from India or Indonesia, it comes from Asia, two continents. The neck has to be really strong wood because it cannot bend. It can't have the flexibility we want in the front one. So this is a cedar from Honduras, so it comes from Central America, and they also use mahogany. Now, then, so what do we have now? So we have one, two, three. Now this black is not painted black, it's a black wood, it's ebony from Africa. Four. This piece of rosewood's from Brazil. Brazilian rosewood, which is what all good classical guitars are made out of. And so, five out of seven continents to make one guitar. Pretty amazing. And that's why he can get seven, eight thousand dollars for this instrument. What you need to start with is about a $200 guitar. If you're still borrowing somebody's guitar, any cheaper than that, and you're probably gonna, it's gonna make you work too hard. So 200 gets you into a nice guitar that will be flexible enough and good enough. Yamaha's is, is a good brand name, right around 200. And then uh, your wish list can go up from there, whether it's classical or, or nylon, str uh, nylon strung or a steel strung, you can, you can shoot the moon or $1,000 range gets you into really good guitars. So again, I'm Terrence Farrell. It was a pleasure being with you, and we'll see you next time.